Hey guys, Adam and Shaw here. Uh, I actually got sent this video on Instagram. Um, someone asked me to react to it and uh, see whether or not Andrew Tate could really fight. Um, I actually know that he could. We, we started our careers, well, I started my career while he was already quite established in the UK on the kickboxing scene. Um, he had a few really good wins and he, he had a European title and I think he had a world title and then the infusion title, I believe. Um, he had a good win over a British guy named Jamie Bates, who I think he's still fighting. He went on to go and beat uh, Harold Gregorian, Gregorian at Glory 75. But I think they probably fought when they were both about 77 kilos. That This fight now is at 93. Um, let's get into it. Uh, Yeah, the, the guy that's fighting in this fight, uh, look, he's 75 wins and 9 losses here. Um, the guy that's fighting is making his pro debut. So, yeah, uh, I think Andrew should have been pretty confident going into it. Um, he lost in 2016 to, I've had to write his name down, um, Ibrahim Al-Bustati. At Infusion, he lost, that was in 2016, and then he came back in 2020 and won three fights all by KO, including this one. Um, I haven't actually watched this properly, so it should be fun. Um, he did, it's now for having like a bit of a, like a sneaky, like counter style. Um, yeah, he doesn't really keep his hands up or anything, but let's have a look. Okay. <laughs> the guy's eager to get him out of there. Like I said, this guy's in his pro debut, so he's probably had a few amateurs, but I mean, he's, he's going for him. <laughs> um. When you know that your opponent's one of these guys that likes to lean back like that, you really have to try and shut them down. And I think this guy, uh, Cosmic, is you know he's, he's he's doing his best to do that, take the the range away from him. I think Andrew Tate's six one. I mean, he might be even taller than that. This guy is obviously shorter. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure about his uh, his method of trying to close the range, but fuck, he's. He's catching Andrew. He's caught him with a couple of get a couple of good left hooks. Yeah, the, there's uh, there is an advantage that you find with. I mean, Andrew's just managing to keep him away. I think probably looking to get the the other guy tired. Hopefully, you know, hoping that he's going to blow himself out of steam. Um, I mean, he's every shot that he's thrown, he's. You know, he's throwing bottom light hard, you know. Um, it's difficult to have the cardio to deal with that, especially at 93 kilos. You can see he's not a lean, not a lean guy. The guy probably looks like he could cut down to like, I don't know, 78 kilos, maybe, you know, a little bit more. <laughs> Determined though. <laughs> But yeah, th this guy's got an advantage of being able to see a, a load of tape on Andrew, um, so, which Andrew obviously doesn't have on him. He, he's got his own experience. He should know how to deal with someone like him already. But when you're fighting someone with the, the, with a load of fights on YouTube and stuff, you you, you know what you what their main weapons are. Okay, so this is kickboxing rule, so to, you know, limited clinch. Oh, looking at the surface of the canvas, it looks slippery. If you look, there's a bit of a shine on it. Yeah, so kickboxing rules: no elbows, uh, knees are allowed, but no, no, uh, or well, no clinch or limited clinch. Very keen. Yeah, I mean, Andrew's really, you know, he's, I mean, he's in a fight, isn't he? Um, 
the time. Yeah. Okay, well, first round. I mean, if, you could probably give it to the other guy. Um, co Cosmic. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you could probably give it to the other guy. I mean, he's definitely working more. Uh, Andrew hasn't really caught me with anything other than a couple of uh, push kicks. But, I mean, it, it is Andrew's the, you know, the, you know, a lot more experienced and whatever, you know, he he, he knows sometimes you've got to lose the first round or, you know, be down the round to, to, uh, to start to win the others. He really, even though the other guy's throwing everything and throwing hard, he's... Andrew doesn't really look like he's uh, he's in any trouble. Um, another thing that comes with experience is is the ability to stay relaxed and composed under under pressure like that. <coughs> you start to become fireproof. Okay. Come on. I see that what I really don't like about this kickboxing style is like that you can always see like Andrew's getting ready to throw a to throw a hopping sidekick, isn't he? <laughs> you know, look at his feet. It's a oh, it's another thing I, I just really don't like to see. They always telegraph when they're gonna spin or you know. <laughs> I mean, Andrew's definitely got skills, you know. He, he did fight MMA as well, but I haven't seen uh, any of his MMA fights. This is just one that got sent to me. I don't think that he's a guy. I mean, no, he's. Uh, I mean, he, his timing and everything's really good, and he has got skills. He was just never really tested against the best guys in the world. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit later on. Yeah, I mean, the the, the guy. You know, he's starting to look a little bit more tired now. He he's, doesn't really have the same uh, exp explosiveness in his shots. Yeah, something that you'll see, and I, I hate to see it. It's like a real pet hate for me, uh, if any of my students do it, is when they start to lose control of their mouth guard. Um, you know, like, like when they they start to let the mouth guard drop. This guy's starting to do it now. But the problem is, but when that starts to happen, it just gets worse and worse. You start to suffocate. At least if your mouth guard's stuck in here, you can still open your mouth to breathe. When it's down, you, you, it makes it much harder to breathe. And yeah, it, it's just an obvious thing that you don't have control of it. You see it a lot with guys, uh, in, in, you know, like uh, into clubs or amateurs. Hats off to this guy. There they go. You can see he's losing it again. Oh. Mm. Nice knee through the middle. It's a nice technique to... Uh, while someone's running you down, if you, like, step back, step back, step back, and then you can, uh, you know, pull them into a lead kick or a lead hook pretty easily. Um... A few really good fighters do that. P Peter Crook from the UK was one that used to do that really well. Oof. Yeah, I mean, has the guy quit? I mean, it's always a bad sign when I start to turn around. <laughs> what did he catch him with? Okay, yeah, that right hand was the one that really <laughs> put him off fighting, I think. Is he done? Go on, you got more in you. No, he's just tired and, you know, it's a fight that he didn't come in to win. So I think, you know, Andrew, at this stage of his career, wasn't as concerned with, um, with being a fighter anymore. Uh, before this, when he was fighting like the, the like bigger guys and competitive guys, uh, he was, you know, fighting to be a fighter. You know, he really wanted to be a fighter. And then I think 
after he got knocked out in 2016, it seems like the fights that he took, like this one, uh, you know, for someone's debut, um, I think, you know, he's just fighting to say that he's still a fighter, you know. Uh, but, you know, I, I, you know, you can only fight who's in front of you, but the position that he's in, in, in Romania, you know, then with the money and whatever else, and the respect that he had there, I think he could, you know, just do whatever he wanted. And, yeah, if that meant fighting guys on their debuts when he's nearly 100 fights into his career, I mean, why, 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 why fight anyone hard if you don't really want to fight them? I mean, there was a great circuit, like, while well, he was still actively fighting, of, like, Simon Marcus, um, even Israel Adesanya, uh, Alex Pereira, of course. Um, who else? Uh, Chidi. Njikanu, uh, a guy from Las Vegas. I, I, I sparred with him a few times at One Kicks Gym. I'm really sorry. If he's watching this, I'm sorry I've butchered your name, bro. Uh, but g great fighter. And, it, it, you know, you look at any of those guys and, like, you, you'll see, like, Joe Schilling will pop up on Simon Marcus's thing. And these were, like, the top guys at the time. Uh, Andrew was fighting guys in China for a while, too. And so were so was Simon Marcus and, uh, and uh, Israel Adesanya and stuff. And they were all the same kind of weight. So I think if he really wanted to have pushed to be like the king of, of uh, kickboxing rules, I think they, they were fights that he probably could have done, but didn't. Um, but, you know, I, I, you know, maybe the, the opportunities just didn't come up for him, but I, I, I think they probably did. And they, they didn't happen. Um, so can he fight? Yes, he can fight, uh, but not among the top guys. I don't. I don't think he would have ever have really uh, caused Israel Adesanya or Simon Marcus, Joel Schilling. I don't really think it have caused them any trouble. Even Artem Levin, who who was another great fighter from from that time and those rules and everything. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think he'd have competed with those types of guys. But. Yeah, if you want me to react to any fights, just say, uh, my, I'll attach my uh, my socials in the description. Um, any questions and opinions, just let me have it. Um, I hope that criticising Andrew Tate hasn't made me a simp. It might have done. <laughs>